glad you have you joining us again. It's Business Breakfast on iBrand Television. Let's get talking now. Let's take a quick dive into our um, conversation segment of the program. This time around, we're talking insurance. Despite macroeconomic challenges, the Nigerian operating faced um, the, facing the Nigerian operating environment in the financial year 2023, the nation's insurance industry recorded a significant improvement in returns as the market recorded total asset of 2.67 trillion naira and capitalization of 851 billion naira in the past year 2023. According to official data recently released by the, nine, by the National Insurance Commission, that's NICAM, the sector sustained a progressive trend of positive market performance at the close of 2023 fourth quarter, posting a growth close at 1 trillion naira, representing about 27% growth compared to the 970 billion naira recorded in 2022. The non-life business accounted for 61.3% of all premiums written during the year, while the life segment contributed 38.7%, valued at 388.1 billion naira. The market also recorded a retention of about 87.7% for the life business, just about 54% for non-life, while the aggregate market average retention stood at 66.7% during the same period. The NICOM data showed that major growth drivers in the non-life segments of the market were oil and gas and fire insurances contributing 27.3% and 24.1% respectively. To give us more perspective and deep insight into this development, I'm now being joined live virtually by an insurance expert, Olushala Olowoyeye. Good morning, sir. Glad to have you join me on the program. Good morning, and I'm glad to be on your show this morning. It's a public holiday. Happy holidays and happy Good Friday. Thank you very much. Happy Good Friday to everyone. Uh, uh, it's a uh, season of reflection. Exactly. Now let's get talking now. Before we dive into the conversation, I'd like to get your thoughts on the recent move by the CBN MPC to hike interest rates again, um, but I think about 200 of 200 basis points. What is your reaction to this? And what ripple effects do you think this will have on the on businesses and the economy as a whole? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, as regards the for the hike of 200 percent basis points. Uh, by the CBN, actually this uh, is cumulative with initial 400 basis points, yeah. making it about 600 basis points. Yeah. This is really, really hard on every business. Mm. Uh, I was expecting for them to stay on the hike uh, a little bit and allow the effect of the 400 uh, basis point to reflect mm. before taking another uh, right. But mm. what I think I noticed is that uh, all in the beat to be able to manage inflation is what is bringing about this consistent move. However, we need to take note that the cost of doing business is continuously becoming much higher. And so uh, the idea of increasing the basis point further, I think there should have been a hold for a while before the further was hike. Mm. Even though we recognize the need to manage inflation. All right. That yeah. will be my perspective for now. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for that insight. Now let's dive into our conversation this morning. What do you believe are the primary drivers behind the impressive 27% increase in Nigeria's insurance assets reaching 20, reaching 2.67 trillion era in the past year 2023? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I'm sure in one of uh, the interviews in the past have made mention that the future of the finance sector uh, has a lot to do with the insurance mm. and we have been behind for too long uh if you go to uh the europe uh, even down in south africa insurance are the ones that lead the sector uh insurance owns banks in other jurisdictions uh it's only nigeria that we still have a bit of this exception mm. uh, and so what you have just seen is to show you an indication of what the future of the insurance sector looks like mm. and um, once we take it seriously we become more 
conscious about it, and there are more regulations from government to guide uh, the growth of the insurance sector. You will see multiple, uh, you know, growth happening in terms of the asset. Now, another major reason is the uh, gap, the infrastructure gap that currently exists. As we tend to fill this gap, there will be need for more infrastructure. There will be need for more insurance to be able to work to take care of this. And uh, I'm sure uh, our rail system is becoming more stable now. And so there will be some level of insurance coming up from that side. You've seen amount of investment that is also going into uh, power so that, uh, you know, and that's why you see that uh, oil and gas sector, there's going to be quite a lot of huge investments in billions of dollars coming in, and that is going to really, really help. You can also see that the insurance of the refinery will also have been part of the contribution to what we have seen uh, going on. So uh, uh, the, 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 the outlook uh, for the insurance looks very, very bright. And uh, as much as uh, the new administration with the new renewed hope agenda uh, is going to put more money around infrastructure, uh, we should continue to experience uh, further growth in uh, the risk assets in the insurance sector. All right, then. Thank you so much for that insight. Now, I will need you to elaborate on any specific sectors or types of insurance products that have experienced notable growth contributing to this increase in insurance assets. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. That, that question, uh, you know, I'm sure only last year uh, you heard about when NICOM made it mandatory mm. uh, that all comprehensive insurance policies shall mm. be at 5%. Mm. That is very, very significant. Uh, you know why? Because at some point, some were doing 2%, some are doing 1.5%, some are doing 3%. But with the regulation, you cannot take comprehensive policy for less than 5%. And therefore, this enable uh, a situation whereby premium uh, is, you know, is stable on motor insurance. And motor insurance is one of the uh, huge insurances that, you know, that have been a lot of acceptance right from the 70s, you know, to the 80s. And, you know, it has now become something that everyone that drives on the road is mandatory. You need to have minimum of the third party policy. But a lot of people have now got aware to know that comprehensive policy protects you what better. And this one is coming at 5%. It is good for the underwriters, it is good for the insured, and it's also good for the brokers who are in between these uh, parties. All right, now, you rightly made mention of the fact that um, insurance penetration in Nigeria is still very, still very low. And then despite this low rate, we're seeing more insurance companies coming up and more, 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 more firms are, are, are taking over the shares of insurance company. More companies are also um, in the financial service sector expanding in, in, into the financial um, and space to broaden that um, 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 penetration gap. Now, how does this significant rise in insurance asset reflect the evolving landscape of insurance penetration and financial stability within the Nigerian um, ecosystem? Okay, thank you. Now, consider that question and looking at the way the insurance spread is, and if you look at the statistics that clearly define how the assets, uh, are, you know, have moved, uh, non-life uh, business contributed about 60-something billion, uh, you know, to this growth that we have experienced. But we need to also watch the life business. It's actually growing. Mm. Because in other jurisdictions, life business, usually have a bigger number of access much more uh, than the general business uh, because uh, you know that is more stable fund and it stays uh, you know longer but because of our culture you know the climate currently the way uh, we, we, we react to life assurance uh, we're not taking it uh, you know 100 percent on board like the way uh, that jurisdictions do uh, that uh, you can see, a, 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 you know, a similar element of you saw the growth in the pension industry. Mm. And now looking at our pension uh, funds between 2005 2006 to date, look at the trillions that have been contributed within that short period of time. 
imagine our life businesses have also uh, been stable in that manner. Mm. I tell you, you will be having times four, times five, if not times six of what we are currently calling the total asset of insurance sector today. Mm. Because the life funds are more stable and they are long term. Mm. And they are the ones that you can easily use to grow uh, your economy, grow the system. Uh, because people, uh, when you take a life policy, minimum you could, you, you know, you could be 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Some policies last for as much as 30 years without having any claim. So it allows the insurance company to be able uh, to channel those funds properly into growing uh, uh, the economy. So uh, let's look more uh, from the contribution now. Uh, we have the life business uh, current segment contributing about 88.7%. Mm. Why the non-life business contributed about 61.3%? Uh, but like I mentioned, with the infrastructure gap, as government put more funding into uh, into uh, building infrastructure, and as more companies are able to stabilize, and uh, you know more uh, foreign direct investment comes into Nigeria, and more plants are being built, uh, and the are still come to back on board. There will be reasons for more insurance, and that will really, really help uh, the insurance sector to really, really work grow. But on the other side, as more money uh, gets into the hands of people. As income of people also increase, you know, the discussion about minimum wage is currently being discussed. Mm. If minimum wage is also increased, it means that people will also be able to access more life assurance work policies mm. because it's a contributing uh, way of, you know, making some small investment towards your work, towards your work future, or in case anything is wrong, uh, your family is able to have something to fall back uh, on. And as more awareness come on this side, you are definitely going to see further increase in this at all. Uh, and I would like to give one more example all right, to uh, Botrez there. Right. Uh, considering the budget of uh, a, a, a Anambra State, for yes. example, yes. Uh, where uh, recurring expenditure was about 90-something uh, billion, and 313 billion out of that 400-something billion budget was related to capital expenditure. So you can imagine the amount of infrastructure that is going to go into that particular state. Not to now talk of legal state, not to now talk of most majority of the, you know of the state are now going to put a lot of money into building what infrastructure, which in turn uh, will bring about more quality insurance uh, across uh, the nation, and that will grow the industry. All right then, cruise one there. So you made mention of the fact you, you you did touch about uh, awareness. Now, do you think that NICOM, the insurance company, and other stakeholders are doing enough to 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 make to 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 increase the current level of awareness about insurance across country? Because so many people really don't know more about insurance. Some people don't really know about the benefit and the impact of insurance. And then again, for the for the for the poor masses who see insurance as something premium for for the eye class how can we deepen awareness level across board that we have more people into the insurance net okay thank you very much uh, as regards the key stakeholders in the industry currently right mm. from the regulator nicom uh nia is also an association that tries to promote uh, activities on insurance uh the institute of uh, insurance of nigeria and uh, ncrib which is also another recognized body everyone and also the items are also trying their own way however i think the solution or what can help us to push uh further penetration and more awareness is a more collaborative approach mm. into creating this awareness mm. as against the silo based approach that is currently being what adopted mm. because everyone is just trying to you know uh, do something in their own way and you know before you know it uh, quite a of, you know, complications, uh, you know, people don't get clarity uh, from the, you know, there is a bit of ambiguity in the process. However, if there can be, you know, consistent round table conversations on how we are you know, pushing the light from the grassroots level, you know, issue of insurance needs to be discussed at primary school, at secondary school level, at tertiary institutions, 
Uh, how many universities in Nigeria currently even offer insurance? Hmm. This is what we need to push from the grassroots. Uh, you know, if you get most graduates of insurance in Nigeria today, maybe you pick from maybe four or five uh, major schools. So it's something that needs to be worked solved from the grassroots level. And we have to all collaborate to be able to, including the media, needs to assist in this process. Government needs to come on board to also be able to push this process so that insurance becomes a way of life, mm -hmm. not something that is only for the rich or is only for the medium class, but it's something that everybody needs to want to embrace. Oh, to protect okay. our businesses. And I'm sure you heard of the fire incident that just happened, uh, was it, they, you know, just yesterday or two days ago. Uh, one of the NMPC uh, stations. Yes. That's, that's a lot. Yes. That's a major loss. Giving uh, go fire also in Lagos. Quite a lot is happening across. Mm. And we need, uh, you know, the right insurance in place to be able to, uh, to take care uh, of all of this. All right. As we try to wind down this conversation, I'd like to get your thoughts on the, what challenges do you anticipate the industry, the insurance industry might face in sustaining this growth trajectory? And what strategies would you suggest to overcome these challenges? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, now, looking at the way the industry is going, uh, I think uh, for the last two to three, four, five years, I, I think immediately even... Uh, prior to COVID, you can see the influx of a lot of foreign, uh, you know, insurance companies coming into Nigeria to make, you know, investment in preparation uh, for this kind of change that is going on. And uh, it's part of what has also contributed uh, to the growth in assets that you have seen. Now, uh, the challenge is in terms of making sure that the penetration is consistent and we have sufficient you know, the, 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 the challenge is about capacity. How much of this insurance can we, uh, you know, underwrite within the Nigerian uh, system? And that poses a challenge for more recapitalization uh, to be able to, uh, to achieve this. Uh, because uh, if you look at the valuation of a single aircraft now, uh, an aviation policy uh, to take care of that uh, might involve... 15, 20 insurance companies come together to be able to underwrite uh, such uh, a policy. And if you are not careful, 60 to 70 percent of it, you need to underwrite it outside the, world, the country because mm. the capital base, the balance sheet size of our insurance company cannot uh, take care of this. Uh, but you've seen what is going on with the bank. Mm. Uh, at least CBN has given them two years. Uh, to match up with this new recapitalization base, yeah. of 500 billion and 200 billion. Yes. Uh, we should anticipate uh, something similar coming uh, from the insurance sector if really we are going to get out of it there for what is ahead of us uh, in terms of being able to take on the kind of exposure uh, that is going to be coming with this uh, level of foreign direct investment that is expected in the oil and gas sector, uh, most especially in the gas area, to be able to ensure the gas sector, you need a lot uh, to be able to do that. Not only in terms of money, but also technical work, technical work capacity to be able to work, uh, to take on this. I, I think that will be a few I'll share for now. Uh, I'm sure in our subsequent uh, interviews, we will be able to discuss. Thank All right. You All right, then. Yes. Yeah, time is really not our sad and sweet. There's really so much to discuss about because I really wanted to, I really want to get your, your, your thoughts on the recapitalization base by, set by the APS Bank and then what the, what NICOM is also doing in that regard. But because of um, our time, we'll have you another time where we'll also f give you more time to discuss more on that. But finally, now, as we wrap up now, looking ahead, what do you perceive uh, as the key factor that will shape the trajectory of the Nigerian insurance industry and how can stakeholders capitalize, capitalize on this momentum to drive sustainable growth and development? Okay, so the key major driver is uh, for our, you know, core underwriting firms to come up with new products. Uh, we need new products. There are quite too many traditional products in the industry, uh, which, uh, you know, time has changed. Quite a lot have changed about the industry. Quite a lot have changed about how these people do businesses. Uh, we've seen the era of now artificial intelligence driving most of the businesses, 
we need policies to take care of cyber uh, security, cyber crime, and quite a lot of things. I'm sure you've seen what government is battling with. Uh, with finance, uh, you know, a cryptocurrency, uh, you know, an organization can just be anywhere in the world and be doing business uh, here in Nigeria. So our insurance company needs to, you know, wake up to new product development to be able to take care of current needs and be able uh, to get uh, our students recovered. And our insured must satisfy uh, with positioning them back and making sure that they get full benefit for taking Insurance. We'll leave it at that. I'd like to say a big thank you. Thank you to you for your time with me on the show this morning, Mr. Olushala Oluwoyaye. Thank you so much for the insight and also giving us fresh perspective into insurance and all the matters that concern it. Thank you so much for your time with me on the show. Have for yourself a wonderful holidays and a blissful, restful weekend ahead of you. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Thank all right. You.